keyword on it by just bringing up the keyword panel, and I'll type in splash. And now that keyword has been added to that portion of the clip. You see from this blue bar up here that that's been added to that portion of that clip. I go back here to the beginning, select another range here where the car is skidding, and I can put in uh, a skid keyword. Oops. Put in a skid keyword. And now I've got that keyword on that portion of the clip. And over here in the left-hand column, you'll notice that I've got a skid and splash smart collection that have automatically been added. If I open up this clip, you can see that I can select, and I can select those two ranges of that clip. This is really powerful. A lot of times you have really long clips, you have a 20-minute clip, and you might have a few 10-second segments in the middle that are interesting. Instead of having to keyword the whole thing with splash and skid, and then have to go back and find the pieces you want, you can tag just the sections that you're interested in. There's also a favoriting mechanism, like with the favorite button. It's really powerful, and it's amazing when you have a lot of content and you're trying to find things. You can do this, and the keywords can overlap. So you can have do the same section of media can have this, multiple keywords on it. So it's really powerful for being able to organize your footage. Now, the list view is one way to look at this, but I also have a film strip view. And in the film strip view, we get film strips of all your content with skimming. You get to control the time frame. We're currently set to one thumbnail for each 10 seconds of video. And you'll notice as I skip, scroll down here, without even having to move the cursor around, I can tell what's in each of these clips. I'm sure everybody here has had the situation where you're trying to find some content and you double click on something, you open it up, you scrub back and forth, not that one, close it, double click on something, scrub back and forth. Move stuff around earlier and later in the, in the timeline. I can also pick up a clip that has things attached to it, and the audio that's attached to it moves with it automatically. And the timeline rearranges itself as I go. The magnetic timeline also allows me to do things, like for example, if I go to extend this piece of audio, normally when I get to this point where it's going to hit that other audio clip, I wouldn't be able to move it any further. I'd have to go move that other one out of the way and worry about what other things that was going to affect. Here I just move it down a little further. <laughs> timeline because you're not messing with things further down in time. Your timelines are no longer fragile. It's really amazing. One of the things you'll notice here is there are no hard tracks in this interface. There aren't really any tracks. Tracks come and go as needed. So you can have things stacked up really deep in one section.